Hi, it's Gadget UK here again. As you can see, this time I'm looking at um, an ACA1220 from an individual computer. I've had this for a few years now. Um, I think this is one of the last ones of the 1220 before they moved on to the new range. Um, I'm not keen on the new range, if I'm completely honest, just because of the, the the limitation on the RAM. I think you only get 64 meg on this version. You get 128 meg. Now, yeah, you, you could argue that 64 meg is more than you would ever need to use, really, um, but. You know the memory chips are so cheap. Why not just give us 128 meg? You could even, you might even be able to throw more on. Give us 256 meg. You know we're, we're all, we always want more, even if we can't use it. Uh, us uh, enthusiasts, I'm sure. Um, so you previously seen when I talked about this in the past, um, you can overclock this pretty easily just by changing the jumpers here, and they correspond with uh, the little matrix, a uh, little table underneath here that shows you the different clock. Um, you know, the processor speeds you can get based on um, the jumpers. Um, I think there's a chip there that controls that. I think it's I think it's this little chip here. I've not looked at the part number, but you could probably work out how the multipliers are being derived from these jumpers by looking up the uh, data sheet there for that chip, I think. I could be wrong. Because um, I think when I first talked about it, I thought it was the FPG, there's an FPGA on there, these Xilinx chips. I wonder if one of those was responsible for the clocking and uh, the jumpers were directly linked to that. I'm not sure, I, I could be, it could be either way. Um, don't quote me. Um, so yeah, coming back to this table, um, there's two different, I think, and this might depend on the revision of the boards you've got. You've got, well, it does, I'm pretty, pretty sure. I'm not, I, I'll only be 100% sure when I've got a socket on for the 030 because I do have um, an 030 chip. Um, so that was my first thought with this. I thought, I'll get a socket on here, remove this chip, get an 030 chip in here and see if it works. Now it's not going to work in terms of the MMU support, I don't think, it might do, I don't know. I don't think it is, I think you need an update to the uh, firmware on these uh, Xilinx chips. Um, but, uh, and also the burst mode, I don't think it would, the burst mode would, wouldn't work without an update to the uh, to the firmware, like again, on those um, FPGAs either. Um, but I thought, in terms of the cache, it might actually work, you know, if, assuming there's no reason, um, you know, no dependency to just completely brick it, you know, stop it from working at all. I would think it would work, but you just wouldn't be able to use the burst mode, and maybe the MMU stuff wouldn't work. I don't know. Um, so I might try that. I might get a socket on there as well. Um, now, socket, a socket for that one, I forget, I think it's 128 pin. It's pretty hard to find a socket for that chip. Um, I searched high and low for about a month, and I can't find anything anywhere. Other than that, I did find something, I think it was Farnell or something, it was like 40 or 50 quid or something for a socket, which is ridiculous, I'm not paying that. Um, but I did manage to source some sockets for this. But then the other thing I thought you could do is you could use the, you know, single in line um, turn pin, um, you know, single, you know, a single row, and uh, build a socket out of that. I might do that, I don't know. Uh, that might be a subsequent video. I think in the first instance, what I'm going to do is remove this chip here, um, get a socket on, which um, I've got, I'll show you those in a minute. Um, yeah, desolder the chip, get the socket on, and uh, put a 25 megahertz version. You, you know, you can get. As you can see, this is a 68020RP16E. There's a 25E. I've got one of those on the way at the moment. Um, so that will be um, pretty good. But you can also see um, I've ha ha haphazardly uh, mounted um, a dip. Uh, you know. Uh, Dill type crystal there. This did originally have a surface mounted crystal. Um, now I've removed that. Use hot air to remove it. Nice and easy, you know, nice and easy to get off with hot air. It's pretty hard to get it off if you don't use hot air. If you just try and heat the tabs at either side, it's damn near impossible to get it off, and you could risk damaging the pads and you know the traces and things there. So I wouldn't do that. I'd use hot air. So I've started off about 100 degrees just to warm it up, you know, for maybe 30 seconds or so, and then bumped it up to about 250. Um, and it came off really, really easily, and it didn't get too hot, you know, the heat didn't spread. You could always mask some of the area off with some capstan tape or something, um, if you wanted to do that. But yeah, be very careful if you do this mod and take the crystal off. But what I've done is originally, this had a 20 megahertz crystal here, and I was uh, overclocking this to 26.7, just using the standard jumper positions on the underneath here. So, um, looking down the 020 list here, you can see stock is 13.33, and then I think mine was a 16.67, uh, but I was overclocking via the switch to 26.67. Um, 
and that round lukewarm, barely lukewarm. In fact, and I, you know, I run it for, it's been used all the time I've had this. It's been run at twenty six point six seven, no issues at all, and it's only ever got lukewarm. But then I swapped out the crystal. I did this about a month ago, um, and I got uh, the, I removed the twenty megahertz crystal that was on here and swapped it for twenty four. So that bumps the clock speed up to thirty two. Um, and it also increases the memory, um, and th that's important to know. You know, looking back at this table again here, um, you'll see that the, the 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 multiplier I was using, which is this one here, which is twenty six point six seven, that gives you a memory clock of eighty. So if you increase increase the base clock from twenty to um, twenty four, that gives you thirty two megahertz here, and I think that probably takes this just under a hundred. Um, now I thought about going beyond that. I've got a thirty megahertz crystal, which I'm going to try when I've got the oh, when I've got the um, twenty five megahertz chip on here, because that twenty five megahertz chip, I reckon, I can easily get forty megahertz out of it. So adding a thirty megahertz crystal should give me forty megahertz here, but it's going to overclock the memory to something like one hundred and twenty. Um, I could have my maths wrong there. I might be running at 100 now, actually, with the 24. It might go up to 120 um, or 100. It might even go up to 140. I don't know. I'll sit down. I'll calculate it in a minute. Just at the moment, this time of the day, I can't get my brain into gear. Um, it is really, really simple. I'm just like, I'm just not with it at the moment. I'll, I'll come back to you. I'll perhaps do an update with a black screen with some text on in a minute just to make that crystal clear. But uh, yeah, that's the plan. So I'll get the desoldering station um, heated up now. Um, and we'll get this chip off here. So apologies for the slight angle there. Um, loading the benchmark software now. Now this is running with the clock, as you can see down here, 32 megahertz. Hopefully that's uh, coming out okay. Um, the actual crystal oscillator on that at the moment is 24 megahertz, so that's translating to 32 megahertz on this ACA 1220. Um, what else was going to say? I think the memory is going to be, I think, just under the 100 megahertz because it was 80. It was running at 80 megahertz when it had a 20 megahertz crystal in there. It's got 24 now, so what's that? 20 percent. Uh, you think it would be? Yeah, it's going to be just under the 100 megahertz. I think. Uh, I could be wrong, I'll check that after. Um, but if we run the integer math test now, um, I'll show you the benchmarks for that. We'll do the same thing, I'll do a memory test as well, just so you can see the speed um, of the memory there. I mean, I, I, if I was going to do this properly, I could do it more comprehensive and go through some of the other tests as well. I might do one or two of the others while we're here. Um, bear in mind this is running at 32 megahertz, and it's rock solid, I've played this for hours at 32 megahertz without cooling on there. Although the chip does get quite pretty warm, actually, when you run it at the 27 megahertz, the, you know, the initial overclock, 26.7, that I originally ran at, doesn't get warm at all. You can run it for hours and hours and hours, and it's fairly lukewarm. But at 32 megahertz, it gets pretty hot, actually. After a few hours of playing, you touch it, yeah, it's pretty hot. You wouldn't burn yourself on it, but you're like, yeah, that's actually too hot. So I would recommend if you're going to overclock using a 20, 24 or 25 megahertz crystal, you know, just to Clarify that 25 gives you 33 here, and I think the memory will be running at 100. Um, but using a 24 megahertz crystal, you're going to get 32 megahertz, and it's going to run just under 100. Um, but yeah, at 32 or 33 megahertz, you want to be using uh, you know a, a fan or a heat sink, good heat sink or something on there, really, uh, if you're running it for extended periods of time. Um, we'll just on the uh, do the um, what's it gone now? The memory test. I can't see the damn thing for the life of me. Um, there we go. Yeah, so you can see the memory performance is unbelievable on these ACA 1220 accelerators, especially at this particular clock speed. Um, it's fantastic. Um, we'll just do one more. We'll do dry stone. Yeah, so you can see, you know, approximate values there performance wise you know it's nowhere near a four uh, you know mega four thousand but it's never going to be you've not got the uh, mmu and stuff you've not got the cache on the instructions and the data you've not got burst mode etc um and whatever else you get with a 40 i think the 40s you know is, is better i think you've got 40 with this copy back thing um as well um anyway so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to take the board um out again um 
remove the crystal, I think I'm going to bump that up to uh, 25 to give me 33 megahertz. Uh, I might just retest it again and just show you the difference. Um, but at the same time, I'm going to remove the socket. You know, well, not the socket. I'm going to fit a socket. I'm going to remove the chip um, and stick a socket on there. So I'll show you some of that in a minute. So the way I'm getting the chip off here, um, just use some of this chip quick flux here. Um, any other sort of good branded flux will do the trick. Um, and I'm, you know, I've just covered some of the pins with some flux there. Um, this was just a test, really, initially, because it's all about getting the right size tip. Um, I'm gonna just, I've, you know, got a well a desoldering station here. Um, it's probably the best thing to, to do this with, really. Um, but it's about getting the right size tip. So I've got a brand new, uh, quite fine tip on there now. Um, but the flux is absolutely key. I don't, you can see that it's, it's cleared the pin pretty well there. But without the flux, the heat is just not transferring. I don't know why. Um, and using a brand new tip um, is useful as well. I think it's like 0.65 or 0.7. Uh, I think that's millimetres. But as you can see, those are clearing quite well. So I just need to spend some time going over that, um, and then hopefully the chip should just come off there. I should be able to get a new socket on. Well, that was a nightmare. It <laughs> seriously was. Um, the desoldering station unblocked most of the holes. But anything that's on a ground plane or a power plane, you know, with quite a large uh, track there, you know, um, was proving I I impossible almost to get uh, the heat to go through. So I had to use a combination of hot air and ultimately use hot air to finally release the chip. Um, you know, sort of preheated it to about 100 degrees, then up to about 2 210. Um, and eventually I had to go up to about just below the 300 mark and uh, just heat it for a few minutes on both sides and then the chip just literally slid out with this extractor really easily um, no damage there um, and the surrounding board did get a bit just a bit hotter than I would have liked but not too hot you couldn't touch it um, so I just let that cool down hopefully I've not done any damage to this removing that um, I need to clean up pads and things with some uh, solder braid there and I'll get a socket on there and fingers crossed it's, it will still work. Um, I'm going to try and test, retest with this. I'll just use some desolder braid to clean up the pins on this, um, and hopefully this processor still works. But it's been pretty well heated for about an hour. This actually in total, just because of use of the desoldering station, and uh, you know, finally there, the last few minutes with the hot air. So here's the socket I'm about to fit. It's a PGA um, 114 pin is what you need for a 68020. Um, for the 68030 you need a 128 pin PGA. So as you can see, we've got some nice, good, clean solder joints on there now, um, all cleaned up. I'll get it back inside the Amiga. So all connected back up there now. It's just shy of the um, area here. Well, the, the rubber feet actually are the thing that help, um, you know, the, accommodate the, the height of the heat sink there. Um, I would suggest actually it might be worth just getting some larger rubber feet, some additional ones, stick them on, just to give yourself a bit of clearance off the, um, you know, a desk or something. But this does fit totally flat, and the heat sink doesn't protrude enough to touch the uh, the table when it's upside down. So I got the original 16 megahertz 68020 in there. Um, change the crystal out. Um, I don't know if you can see. Uh, you probably just can down here. 33 megahertz. So it's running at 33 megahertz. This is about a week later. I've been running it at 33 megahertz with a heat sink because um, it does get warm. Before it didn't get lukewarm at all. This, it gets hot. Not too hot to touch, but hot. Um, bear in mind it's a 16 megahertz chip. It's running at 33 megahertz, but it runs fine. Um, so I'll go back in there. And I'll just do the same test to the before. I'll do the integer math and then I'll just do the memory. I realise there's probably other benchmarks people might be interested in, but these are just good ballparks to give you an indication, certainly the memory, and because the, the memory will now be running at 100 megahertz. I don't think I'm going to be able to go beyond 100 without running into uh, problems, like say we're needing to add weight states in or something, uh, which you can't, you know, well, can't do because I haven't got the firmware uh, or the code for the firmware. So, um, as you can see, that's pretty fast there on the integer math 9. It's faster than a 3025, not as fast as a 4000. By a long shot, but obviously the 4000 has got the MMU and it's got burst mode and uh, different size caches and stuff as well. So, um, if I now run the uh, memory test, that should come out significantly faster. Look at that, that's rocketing away there on the memory, um, way faster than 4040. Uh, 4, um, so, anyway, yeah, the, the main thing is that's pretty stable. Well, I say pretty stable, it's 100% stable. 
I have not had a single crash, a single glitch or anything. But you do need to add a heat sink on there if you're going to run one of these 16 megahertz 68020s at 33 megahertz, you know, with a, a 25 megahertz crystal on the uh, ACA1220 there. Um, so I'm waiting for the 40 megahertz, uh, sorry, it's not 40, it's a 25 megahertz uh, chip to come. I'll stick that in there. I'll perhaps do a temperature comparison between you know the 16 megahertz chip that's in there, now running at 33, versus an actual 25 megahertz RC chip running at 33, and we'll you know see if there's any difference there. Um, I'm hoping it runs a little bit cooler, um, and then I might just try putting the 30 megahertz crystal in place of the 25, which would give me 40 megahertz. But I'm overclocking the memory. Uh, you know we'll be up to 120 megahertz there, so it's a case of will it run? Will it? be stable, um, will I create, will I kill one of the FPGAs, I don't think so, they're not even getting warm now, it's just, I think it's more a question of will it just work or not, will it crash etc, will it be reliable, um, so I'll come back once that chip has arrived.